is that coin miner you found just a coin miner or is it actually an APT attacker? Hey Manisha, you have an interesting story about some APT group using a uh, basically, not a new technique, but the new ways to basically staying under the below, below the radar um, by, I think, masquerading themselves as uh, crypto miners. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on the story? Sure, yeah. Uh, thanks, Ganesh. Um, so there's an APT actor that Microsoft is tracking as Bismuth, and I think it's also known as uh, Ocean Lotus or APT32, maybe. And uh, you know they're typically known for their cyber espionage, and they've been around since, uh, I guess, uh, they've been They've been tracked since around 2012. Uh, and they typically target, um, you know, the private sector and government institutions, uh, often in, in Vietnam and France. Um, but recently, their attacks have uh, kind of incorporated the use of deploying Monero coin miners, um, you know, as part of the attack. And, uh, you know, and, and they're, they're using it as a way to kind of uh, hide beneath the, uh, you know, the louder um, attacks, whereas the coin miner is probably maybe generating some alarms and things like that, right? But in the meantime, um, you know, they're continuing to conduct their espionage and their exfiltrating data and things like that. Um, so I think it's kind of like creating a diversion almost uh, for the security analysts, right? Because I think, you know, typically a lot of times whatever is setting off bells and whistles is what people kind of uh, are especially in security, that's what they're going after to kind of mitigate. And uh, while that's happening, um, it, kind of, it may draw the attention away from, you know, what's actually really happening underneath uh, the bells and whistles being fired. Uh, you know, so while they're, while the security analysts are focusing on this coin miner and trying to mitigate this coin miner, um, the attackers are in the background trying to move laterally, um, you know, to kind of maintain their pre presence. Uh, uh, persistence and then just kind of hide under the radar of this, you know, coin miner. And also they're probably to some degree uh, monetizing uh, the compromised networks with the coin miner as well. So there's that added benefit to it. Um, so it's kind of interesting, you know, I, and I, I feel like this is a story that just, uh, you know, was published by Microsoft. But this, part, this sort of thing probably is very common, especially with APT actors. Uh, uh, not not anything specific, but I, I feel like this is the type of thing that most APT actors um, are trying to do. So they're either trying to be completely under, you know, off the radar, not, you know, not you know, generating any alarms or just moving very quietly, or they're doing something like this to kind of take away um, the attention from the other activity that they really want to accomplish, which is the espionage and exfiltrating, uh, you know, some uh, secure data. I think, and also they want to monetize the opportunity while they're doing what they want to right. do. Right, right. Because if they don't detect the coin miner and that thing, you know, and that coin miner is on some servers and it's blasting away, you know, they're going to mm -hmm. be able to get some of the, uh, you know, generate some of the coins out of that. So, and I guess Microsoft, uh, through their research, this uh, a few of the campaigns they, they, that they've looked into, it's it, it, it's the initial attack vector is, uh, you know is pretty much very common like so many other initial attack vectors. It's a, tar uh, you know, really highly tailored spear phishing email, you know, that is going to certain uh, specific recipients in an organization. It's written in Vietnamese. Um, I'm assuming it's uh, targeting a Vietnamese speaking uh, organization or individuals. Um, and once the, you know, once the, uh, uh, you know, once the the email is clicked and uh, and the malware starts, the the initial payload starts uh, um, doing its thing. Uh, they kind of use these uh, the side loading DLLs. Um, you know, it's where they take these uh, legitimate libraries, replace them with malicious variants, and they're using this tactic. Um, uh, uh, and they're and they're kind of using outdated versions of Microsoft Defender, Sys Internals, Debug View, Microsoft Word 2007 to load these rogue DLL files, and then that they use that to establish a C2 channel, uh, you know, from the compromised machine back to their C2. Um, so now, once that's set up, you know, they're they're kind of dropping addi additional payloads, the next next stages, 
you know, they're dropping tools like network scanners. They drop the Monero coin miner, um, um, you know, and then all that gets, uh, ex, you know, when, once they collect their actual data that they're looking for, you know, they expel that back uh, to the C2 as a, as a dot CSV file. Um, so I think, you know, I think this kind this story kind of, we probably, you know, everyone kind of knows this, but it, it, it brings it to the forefront that, you know, just because it's a, you know, it's an alarm that goes off and it doesn't seem like it's a huge priority that there's, you know, it's not going to take your network down. It's not going to uh, maybe lead to anything much more critical being lost or anything like that. You know, in the background, that could be what's happening and you just don't know it um, because it's hidden by these, uh, you know, simple alarms that are going, or these alarms that are going off for things that are fairly common attacks, right? Like coin miners. Um, but it's tough, you know, like, because you try to automate a lot of the responses, right? Because there's so many different things happening in, in security today that it's difficult to stay ahead of it without automation. And you try to use the automation to your advantage. And if it, if that automation ends up missing something that's deeper like this, it, you know, it could be a big problem. So, uh, Manish, I think without knowing you know, much more details, do you think by the time someone detects the coin miner, the APT is already deep inside the network? Is yeah, that so if, right, that is a fair statement because uh, to get the coin mm -hmm. miner, uh, according to Microsoft, to get the coin miner in the network, they've, mm -hmm. had, they've already established a C2 channel from the compromised machine, and they've already probably started moving laterally to different machines. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, they're in the process of main, um, maintaining the persistence and, you know, moving to probably the domain controllers or whatever, um, wherever they're able to get to that gets them the information they need. Typically, APTs wants to stay hidden. I think in this case, they're pretty sure that probably they got the foothold. And once they maybe probably they're confident, they're utilizing the access to modern APTs also. Yeah, no, that's typically, and that's kind of, you know, what this article is uh, saying mm -hmm. is, you know, that's kind of typical uh, modus operandi. But I think in this case, creating this diversion is all, it also is also something that um, helps them um, stay under the radar while, you know, the security analysts are responding and looking, trying to mitigate this coin miner. You know they're out there inspiring them time to do whatever whatever else they want what they actually want to do this seems like a story about security psychology um in a big way like i keep Correct. thinking yeah. about you know if you you're responding to an incident you kind of want to establish what the story is so you you behave in a certain way you're not you're you don't want to spend a whole bunch of time and effort for something that you would consider garden variety so when you see the coin miner you say okay, I think I know what this is. And you shift your Correct. attention to that and you sort of right. ignore the other stuff. And it's it's probably a blind spot for, for security. Right. And, but and it, then you see the one thing that might have also, like, I, I feel like I'm going off on a tangent here, but I when when you look at an article like this and you see that they've got the entire thing, you know, A to Z, they understand every phase of the attack, when you're doing security analysis, even if you've got great detection methods, you're not going to see all of it. But you'll see the noisy stuff. Mm -hmm. You'll make the decision as to what you're dealing with, and you'll and you shouldn't, but you you may focus and in move on with your that day fit, that fit that narrative, right? So like, right. you may clean up five machines that have a crypto miner on, it, and then you see that there was also Mimikatz, which we've seen in this, and go, well, it doesn't totally fit the picture. I'm just going to ignore it, which is the wrong thing to do. But I totally right. understand why somebody might. And that's just a weird thing to me. And it's also weird that, like, in order to stay hidden, the first thing you do is be as noisy as you can and install a crypto miner, which is almost certainly going to get caught. Um, but I guess they're betting that once you think you've dealt with it, you'll leave them alone and they can continue with it. You'll forget about it. You think you, you, you check off the box. I, I, I did what I needed to do and I'm good to go, right? Right. That's you what know, it's kind of it reminds me of like in the movies where, you know, the bank robbers create some other diversion to get the police and, you know, everyone else to go over there while they're quietly robbing the bank. You know, it, it's funny. It reminds me of something from and this is this is way back. Boy Scout camp. Bear with me. There was a merit badge that we had to take. Uh, it was 
someone out there who's who's actually still a Boy Scout or really any of the Boy Scouts is going to correct me on this, but it was like an emergency preparedness merit badge. And one of the things we had to do was get up in the middle of the night and deal with a simulated event of some kind. You know, you'd all have to meet somewhere, you'd have to go, and they'd say there's some group lost in the woods, and the first person you'd meet is someone who says, oh, I know where they are, come on, come with me, and they'll lead the group off in the wrong direction. That is part of the scenario mm -hmm. that they put together mm -hmm. to show you that like even the person, even the things that you think you know about for the situation, you kind of have to take with a grain of salt. You have to say, okay, someone is trying to help me out here. They may not be, they may be stressed. They may be, you know, not completely in their right state ahead and they may distract you or prevent you from actually doing your job. So everything that you're learning, you have to sort of take it on its own and still proceed with what you were originally going to do. Like, don't let it be a blocker for what you ought to be doing and, and don't let it narrow your focus because right. you, know, you will miss things and you will regret it. Right. Right. And that's, that's I think that's, that's kind of the moral of the story, right? Yeah. Sometimes uh, it's not just a, you know, a simple infection that can be easily mitigated and clean up the machine and move along. Right. Sometimes you need to do that extra uh, research and deep dive and make sure that, you know, if there are any clues that you found, whatever clues you could find and make sure you follow it up on everything. And I think the answer, the, the, the right way to say it is always do that. It's not just sometimes. I'll always do that. Right? Just go in assuming you're That's going correct. to do that due right. diligence. You can't, you can't cut the corners because right. you're going to miss something if you allow yourself to get into that mindset. Right, right. But that's human nature and that's social engineering at its best, right? That's, yeah. that's the entire goal.